Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Himmat Singh Ka Saire Q1 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Ilara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Prerna Jhunjhunwala from Ilara Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you ma'am. Thank you Melissa. Good evening everyone. On behalf of Ilara Securities India Private Limited, I would now like to welcome you all for Q1 FY24 post result conference call of Himachinga Saide Limited. Today we have with us the senior management of the company including Mr. Shrikant Himachinga, managing director and CEO. Mr. Senthil Nathan, Senior VP and CFO Operations, and Ms. Shilpa Shan uh, Shanbag, VP Strategic Finance. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Shrikant Himmat Singha for opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Prerna, and thank you all for taking the time this afternoon. Um, I trust you have seen the numbers and. uh what i do uh is take you through a business update um and then open the floor to q and a um so the uh, q1 fy24 operating performance continued to demonstrate progressive improvement on the back of um, um improved capacity utilization levels softening raw material prices and the marginal easing of energy costs as a result uh, you know, we've also seen some positive traction on the capacity utilization level front and uh, plants continue to see uh, improved capacity utilization during the quarter uh, the utilization levels at our sheeting division stood at 66% our territorial division stood at 67% and our spinning division came in at 99%. We continue to see a um, stable demand environment and clock some progressive improvement on the demand front driven by our expanding client base and growing presence in new markets. Um key raw material prices uh, did soften marginally during the quarter uh, as i mentioned earlier and uh, have contributed to better operating margins um himachinka continues to remain focused on deleveraging and we have reduced our net debt to 2512 crores at the end of june uh, versus um 2797 crores during the same period last year uh, these were some of um, the key updates that we wanted to share with you but i'm happy to take any questions that you might have thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. to ask a question you may enter star and 1 we have the first question from the line of riya from equitas investment please go ahead hello sir uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers uh, my first question is in regards to the capex we had kept in hold some part of the capex so uh, when are we planning are we thinking on those lines to restart that part of the capex um yes we did put our uh, some of our capex initiatives on hold uh, 
Uh, at this point, they continue to be hold, uh, on hold. Uh, we would like to, um, you know, make sure that uh, uh, we focused on delivering operating performance before reinitiating those initiatives. Um, so we will we will continue to monitor performance for a little longer before taking a call on uh, beginning those initiatives. We have um, we have adequate headroom on capacity at this point, um, and uh, we thought it prudent to wait a little longer before continuing with our capital expenditure initiatives. I hope that answered your question. Uh, participant. So it seems the participant is off the queue. We move to the next question from the line of <coughs> Sawaskar from Shere Khan. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, uh, so I just want to understand on the demand environment a bit, like, uh, you know, are you seeing any improvement in the order booking from some, uh, from your existing client uh, for uh, the uh, 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 for the quarters ahead? And you know, we have seen sequential improvement in the capacity utilization. Uh, so, uh, whether that trend will continue uh, on the margin front this quarter, we have seen uh, you know margins in the upwards of 20 percent. So, whether that will continue. Uh, in the quarters ahead, or you would be looking at, you know, uh, uh, rationalizing some, uh, you know, some of the prices, product prices, so that would help you to clog in better, uh, uh, you know, order or competitive advantage uh, in the markets uh, in the for the quarters ahead. Um, thank you, Kosta. So, uh, as far as the margins are concerned, you know, we've typically stated that. Uh, in stable conditions, um, our margins would, our EBITDA margins would, uh, you know, be uh, in a band of 18 to 22 percent. Um, so we are in the upper end of the band for the last quarter. But I must say that uh, you know these margins can fluctuate in this band, um, uh, you know, between quarters, depending on the product mix and uh, things of that nature. On the demand front, uh, we are seeing a stable demand environment. Um, you know, we continue to take a lot of initiatives to enhance our market share. Uh, you know, uh, by leveraging initiatives on expanding our product offering, um, expanding our channel reach, um, and uh, diversifying our market presence. Uh, these are the three initiatives that we are constantly taking to ensure, uh, uh, you know, that we get larger market share and uh, feed into the demand across these markets. So that's on the demand front and on the margin front. Um, that, that's, so earlier you have alluded that uh, per quarter revenue trajectory would be around uh, 650 to 700 crores. Uh, uh, do you uh, do you foresee that uh, to happen uh, in the quarters ahead? And on the capex front, as you mentioned, that you have put it on hold currently. And what kind of utilization rate do you expect? You know, uh, to relook uh, at those capex plans. So um, normally we don't give revenue guidances, but in a stable demand environment, I think it's uh, reasonable to assume. Um, given the visibility we have, uh, we should be fairly stable on the revenue front. Um, and on the CapEx front, uh, you know, uh, we did put it on hold. Uh, I, I, I thought that uh, it's prudent for the company to watch uh, global market conditions for a little longer uh, before enhancing capacity. 
So uh, with a further increase in capacity utilization, um, you know, we will reconsider uh, an appropriate time to begin those initiatives once again. But right now our focus is getting our operating performance uh, rhythm back on track um, and, and deleveraging. That's really our focus. Uh, you know, delivering on these two fronts is our highest priority. And um, I think uh, we will wait a little longer before uh, taking a call on the CapEx front. Right, sir. And one last one, if I can, uh, on the deleveraging front, any specific target do we have this year that uh, you would like to reduce debt, uh, uh, you know, by a particular uh, number? Well, on a, uh, on a YOY basis, we have reduced uh, close to uh, 300 crores of net debt from June last year to this year. Uh, so, of course, there will be some fluctuations between quarters, but we hope to continue this deleveraging theme. Um, you know, we have reduced uh, approximately 70 crores from March. Um, so it will be a little difficult for me to give you an uh, accurate hold on what this year entails. Our principal outflow is pretty low this year. But nevertheless, we are working on um, becoming more efficient on our working capital cycles and uh, things of that nature. So I think the theme of deleveraging will continue uh, into FY24. And um, uh, we, will, uh, we will hope to, um, you know, Reduce deck further this this way. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, you may enter star and one. We have the next question from the line of Ankur Kumar from Alpha Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question and congrats for a good set of numbers. Sir, my question is is on the margin side. So can you comment please? It's very good compared to the last quarters, last mini quarters, as well as compared to other players of the industry. Can you comment on that, compliant, please? Well, uh, I can definitely comment on the last few quarters. Um, I unfortunately won't be able to comment on um, our margin profile versus our peers. Uh, but if you look at Hinsinka's margin profile, uh, you know, uh, during fiscal 17, fiscal 18, fiscal 19, first half of fiscal 20, before we really got into a, you know, volatile period during the second half of 20 because of COVID, and then there's been um, uh, a fair amount of volatility in the external environment, which affected our operating performance. So, unfortunately, our margin profile during the last um, uh, during the last several quarters has been impacted uh, either on account of uh, hyperinflation of raw material and energy in the supply chain, or <coughs> extreme fluctuation in demand uh, and things of that nature. So, you know, our operating margin band is consistent with what we have clocked. Uh, in stable conditions in the past, and uh, while we are subject to fluctuations between quarters, uh, I maintain the fact that you know we operate in a band of 18 to 22 percent, and that's 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 how I see the model going forward. Got it, sir. And sir, on interest expense, can you please comment? It's as in it's quite vary, and can you comment on that, please? Well, uh, the last quarter I did mention that, you know, uh, there were some uh, uh, subsidies that we, rec uh, that we had to recognize during the fourth quarter. But what you see now is, um, uh, is more the sustainable number vis-a-vis -vis our current debt profile. Uh, needless to say that interest, uh, uh, interest costs have been impacted. Uh, over the last year, year and a half, because of interest rate hikes, um, uh, generally speaking, uh, so that's been a contributor to higher interest rates, higher interest rates, and thereby higher interest costs. But uh, you know, uh, what you see during this quarter is uh, more like what you'll see going forward. Of course, corrected for any deleveraging that we might see. 
some of the deleveraging we have done has not necessarily resulted in interest cost reduction because of the interest rate hikes that we witnessed during this period. Sure, sir. And sorry, I joined a bit late. I missed your comment on the outlook. Can you please share that again, sir? Well, uh, on the outlook front, uh, you know, Uncle, I think uh, uh, we we are we have our areas of focus. Um, you know, we have to be mindful of the volatile operating performance that we clocked over the last few quarters. Uh, I did share with stakeholders that beginning the second half of fiscal 23 and going forward, we'll be focused on progressive improvement of performance, which is what um, we seem to be clocking. Uh, the demand environment remains stable, but I think I will be focused on enhancing its market share, you know, um, using uh, using uh, its strong product portfolio and, and, and broadening product portfolio, um, diversifying market presence, diversifying channel presence. And, um, you know, you'll also hear from us shortly on, you know, strategy for our strategy for uh, the domestic market, um, you know, that's something that we will share with stakeholders shortly. Got it, sir. Thank you and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ria from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me a follow-up opportunity. Uh, my first question is in regards to the cotton prices. What kind of inventory are we holding right now and... Uh, is the cotton price currently sustainable? Well, the current uh, cotton prices seem to have, um, you know, settled down. Um, we have the, as you know, uh, for the most part of fiscal 23, cotton was, um, let's just say, uh, at its highest ever um, and, and has been cooling down over the last eight, nine months. Uh, it's presently at about uh, 58,000 rupees a candy, uh, and um, we think that it should be stable around these levels. Uh, of course, there are various views on this matter, but it seems to be pretty stable at this point. What kind of inventory do we hold for the full year in terms of cotton? Uh, we hold uh, about a couple of months, nothing more than that, in the pipeline. Okay. Uh, and in terms of the second question, the other expenses have increased this quarter. So uh, what are they pertaining to and are they sustainable? Um, I'd have to have a look at that, but we'll be happy to take that offline. Um, you know, okay. it'll be ordinary cost movements. I don't think there's anything extraordinary, but we'll okay. be happy to circle back on that. And uh, are we having any strategy in terms of prepayment of debt since we will be doing good amount of cash profit this year? No, I think as I said earlier, uh, you know, our focus will be deleveraging. Um, our focus is not prepayment, but our focus is deleveraging. Um, now, what kind of payment schedule are, is uh, for the current year? Um, the principal out, uh, outflow requirements for the current year is fairly muted. Uh, again, we can be we'll be happy to um, share uh, more detail on that offline. But uh, you know, we'll be focused on you know keeping our working capital, getting our working capital cycles to be a little more efficient. As I said earlier, we have collected about 300 crores of net debt uh, from June last year, and so you know, both on the working capital and on the term debt side, we'll be sort of focused on deleveraging. Okay, and uh, my question in regards to demand is what kind of uh, festive order uh, are we seeing and uh, what kind of market share increase are we seeing in any of the categories? Um, you know, the, the demand outlook looks stable, as I said earlier, um, and we are just focused on enhancing market share. Unfortunately, in this industry, you know, percentage of market share numbers are not very accurate yes, because of uh, translucent data that's available. So, uh, but you know, expanding product portfolio, uh, expanding uh, our market 
reach and expanding our channel reach. This will essentially be the theme. As I said earlier, we'll be we have um, you know we have some new direction on our um, presence in India, which we will share with stakeholders um, shortly. That will be more of margin operative or similar to the export markets. Um, I don't see any reason for it to be margin decretive, so I think it should be in line. Okay. okay, thank you so much for answering my question. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, you may enter star and one. We have the next question from the line of Rasmik Oza from Nine Rays Equi Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, I had two questions. One is, on a sequential basis, sir, we have improved our uh, utilization levels, both in sheeting and terry towel, but the revenue on sequential basis is almost flattish. Like in Q4, we had 692 crore revenue, now it is 686. So is it that uh, inventories have gone up just to, you know, supply during this, uh, this quarter for the coming festival season in the U.S.? Uh, if we can just throw some light on this. Um no, that's really not the reason. The reason is, you know, there are some products that the company does not manufacture and typically sources out. Uh, if you see our standalone numbers, you know, you will see an uptick on revenues from 591 crores, uh, 561 crores to 634 crores. Uh, during this quarter. So that's where the capacity utilization numbers uh, come through. Um, but on the consolidated front, they remain flattish because some of the outsourced products, uh, you know, that we've chosen to uh, discontinue um, have are not uh, a part of our revenue streams. Okay. okay. So the second question actually was relating to your other income. Last year, I think we had 41 crores other income, and it's come down to 4 crores now. And for the full year, last year, we had almost 75 crores of other income. It could be relating to export benefits or whatever it is. So if you can just give us some guidance uh, this year, in the next few quarters, are you likely to get some export benefits or how this other income will shape up in the next three quarters for this fiscal year? No, the other income, you know, we uh, last year included some um, assets, um, which we were sort of upgrading, and so we decided to monetize some of our older assets and um, upgrade them. Um, other than that, uh, the other income is most of the times uh, to do with foreign exchange fluctuation, which is part and parcel of our business model because um, of the fact that, uh, you know, over 90 Eight percent of our revenue streams uh, on a standalone basis are exported out, but uh, you know we don't see any uh, volatility on that front, and so other income will largely just reflect uh, ordinary course um, other income and nothing else. <coughs> okay. And and on the export benefits, uh, <coughs> is there any any income that we're going to accrue in the next few quarters on on this export incentives or benefits which the company is you know likely to get? So the export, uh, first of all, you know these are not benefits; these are remission of duties and levies that an export-oriented company incurs during it during uh, the journey of production, right? So. Um, yes, a small portion of that, there, are, there is more uh, like export incentives and benefits, but it's largely remission of duties and levies, and that's an intrinsic part of our revenue stream. So it's not about us expecting, you know, any specific incentives. It's, it's, uh, it's an integral part of the revenue model. Um, so we will continue to recognize uh, and receive uh, the stated uh, levels of uh, reimbursements from the central government on exports, uh, as is the case with several sectors. 
And my last question, sir, is on the utilization level. Now, on the sheeting, we have gone to 66% and Terry Tower is 67%. Uh, for the rest of this fiscal year, how do you see this utilization level panning out? Uh, will it go above 70% or based on your assessment of the current demand that is there uh, from your clients? Well, they, while there could be some fluctuation between quarters, I think our focus will be to enhance utilization. As I was saying earlier, our priority areas is to enhance utilization and to deleverage and to focus and consolidate. That's really our current focus in the short term. That's why some of our CapEx proposals have been put on hold uh, because we have had room in capacity and, um, you know, it will be our endeavor to increase utilization levels. So we have been seeing a steady increase in utilization, uh, and uh, notwithstanding fluctuations between quarters, we, we will hope to continue to improve these utilization levels as we go forward. Any guidance you would like to give for this fiscal year? What kind of utilization you would look at in sheeting and uh, territorial business, sir? Uh, Nick, unfortunately, I can't give you a guidance on utilization, but I think there is a trend slash pattern that's, that's coming through and if our focus is to enhance utilization, and I'm seeing a reasonably stable demand environment at this point, and, and we are focused on enhancing market share, so we hope to improve on these numbers. Okay. Thank you, sir. If there is some repeat questions, I'll come back. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Prerna Jindranwala. Please go ahead. Um, hello, sir. Yeah. I would like Hi. to understand uh, the. Uh, could you give some color on uh, this uh, product uh, expansion, uh, market share increase, and channel expansion that you were talking? So, some color how we progress over the last one or two years uh, on this front, and where should we move, uh, and what we should look forward to? Um, Prerna, that will involve a fair amount of um, sort of backdrop and, uh, you know, detailing. Uh, I'll give you a summary, but I'll be happy to, you know, add more, um, let's say, dimension to what I'm saying offline. Um, okay. So, you know, the various channels we feed into, we feed into big box formats, we feed into department store formats, we feed into specialty store formats, we feed into e-com platforms, and so on. So, you know, we are really um, uh, focused on enhancing our presence across these platforms as and when opportunity presents uh, itself. So that's what I mean by channel expansion. And by product expansion, you know, with, the, with our new Perital plant that was recently commissioned, uh, we are armed with a with a fairly broad product portfolio in the in the home textile context, and um, and so we there are a lot of uh, adjacencies within the world of um, home textile products, which we keep enhancing uh, and sort of tapping into. So it's not just sheets and towels; there are various derivatives of products um, that exist. So when I talk about product expansion or portfolio expansion, that's what I mean. Adding allied, adjacent, synergistic products to our portfolio, positioning us as a total solutions provider within this space. So that's on the product portfolio front and on the channel front for you. Okay. And sir, uh, could you give Europe, uh, U.S.? Uh, and other markets that you are venturing into, how are they shaping up uh, in English as possible? So we uh, we are seeing um, a fair amount of traction, um, you know, in markets like the EU and the UK, um, and uh, we we have been studying and researching, uh, you know, the potential that India has going forward. So we will be, as I said, sharing our thoughts with investors and stakeholders on, on this front um, pretty shortly. So there will be a new 
dimension to revenue streams going forward. That's fantastic, sir. Sir, um, my last question on working capital cycle. Um, this is going to color on um, how we should look at working capital cycle reduction and uh, where do you see it uh, two years, three years down the line? Boy, that's a... Uh, <laughs> Let me let me circle back uh, on that one, Pranay. So, as thematically speaking, you know we have been focusing on improving our working capital cycle. But where we'll see it uh, two, three years down the line, I'll have to give that uh, more thought and shape uh, before I circle back. Sure, sir. No problem. I'll take it off. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Jayesh Lar from Centra Insights LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, firstly, congratulations on such a good uh, afternoon. Mr. Lard, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, you'll have to increase the audio from your line, sir. Sure. Is it good now? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Could you switch to the handset? Hello? Uh, sir, please switch to the handset. The audio is not very clear. Is it good now? Yes, uh, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. So my question was, uh, is it possible for you to give the revenue split between various segments like bedsheet and terry towel? Uh, yes, we don't do that. Uh, you know, we look at it as home textiles. Okay. So, can you at least provide us with the information like uh, which one is the higher, uh, you know, margin segment? Um, yes, uh, it's it's fairly complex. There's no there's no segment like the higher margin segment and so on. It's a it's you have to look at it as a you know a home textile segment that's what uh, you know uh, at this point we we operate only in, in in the home textile space so all of our revenues on a consolidated basis uh, reflect home textile products um, in terms of revenue streams and our products span this the entire spectrum on pricing uh, from opening price point products all the way to luxury products but uh, all in all, Himitsinka, uh, you know, uh, is positioned as a as a comprehensive player across price points, and our sweet spot will be uh, really on a on, if you look at it from a overall standpoint, it's the mid market. So, um, and margins are not necessarily better on the higher end or worse on the lower end. It's more to do with realizations and not margins. Okay. okay, so can you at least provide us the volumes? Like, what were the volumes of bedsheet or dairy towels? So the way you can decipher that is, uh, you know, we have our capacity utilization numbers that are in front of you, and uh, you know our install capacity for those divisions. So sheeting currently has an install capacity of, uh, you know, which is something that you know about, and so on with Terry. So it's easy for you to compute those numbers. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you, and all the best for the future. Thank you, Jayesh. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Varun Gajaria from Umkara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm audible. Uh, yes. yes? Uh, just had a just had a, uh, a small question. So uh, I, I suppose I suppose I'm sorry, Varun, I can't hear you. Okay, looks like what went to plan earlier and how much of it has been put on hold. I, I suppose all of it, but uh, like, what is the context? Uh, what's your question? How much of our capex has been put on hold? Was that your question? Yeah, yeah. So we had uh, announced uh, uh, the fact that we want to de-bottleneck our terry towel capacities and our sheeting capacities. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, we put that on hold. Um, and so 
you know, as I was saying earlier, we wanted to watch market conditions for a little longer before we mm -hmm. reinitiate those capital expenditure programs of ours. We have uh, adequate headroom on the capacity front, and so we thought it's a little premature under these conditions to press that button at this point. But we are, but we have been seeing progressive improvement on utilization, and if this continues, then we'll reconsider, um, you know, um, looking at those initiatives. Right, and uh, what is the amount that uh, you plan on spending on both of these? Uh, so, you know, I've, I've said earlier that whatever we do, we will do in our annual maintenance uh, uh, capex and organic capex uh, buckets. Uh, we will not be looking at spending anything beyond that, um, you know, in the near future because our focus remains to be uh, getting our operating performance, um, you know, to the levels that we desire um, and continuing to deleverage. So whatever initiatives we take on the CapEx front will be within our annual maintenance and organic CapEx um, uh, band, uh, which is typically, um, you know, up to 70 crores. Right. Okay. Okay. That's a uh, Thank you for the opportunity and all the best for you. For the rest of the thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so firstly, on the international demand front, now that more or less the problems are, uh, there are behind going behind us and uh, things are improving, can we say by, you know, in a couple of quarters, maybe in H2, uh, we can go back to our uh, previous level of revenue run rate per quarter, which was around 750 to 800 crores? Um, I, I can't tell you, who, um, Rishi, whether we will or we will not, uh, but I can only tell you that that's what we are focused on doing, um, you know, uh, steadily increasing our utilization levels and steadily enhancing revenue streams and delivering on our margins and our overall operating performance, uh, focus on deleveraging, focus on, you know, all of these initiatives. So that's where we are intended to head, and that is our focus. Uh, whether we will achieve that or not, I mean, I, as you know, we don't give guidances, so I unfortunately won't be able to share anything beyond this. But this is really the internal thinking and team uh, that we are focused on. Okay. Okay. Also, sir, uh, with respect to gross margins, uh, the gross margins are looking very high in this quarter, Q1 FI24. So do we uh, see this normalizing in coming quarters, or is, is it going to stay at the same level for a few quarters? Uh, you know, if you look at it in context to what we have clocked in uh, uh, stable conditions, uh, you know, it's within that band. Um uh, but as I said earlier, it could fluctuate between quarters because gross margins emanate from product mix. Um, you know, uh, it emanates from raw material prices and various other factors. So there could be fluctuations in this number, uh, you know, between the quarters, uh, you know, as we go along. But, um, you know, I think what's safe to assume is that it'll move in a band. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, we would like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter a star and one. We have the next question from the line of Yash Tanna from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, and uh, congratulations on a full set of numbers. So my uh, first question uh, was in relation um, uh, to uh, the previous participant only. Uh, so we are in the range of 650 to 700 crores. Uh, what are the factors that will uh, lead us uh, or moving uh, to breaking out from the 650 700 crore, maybe to 750 800? Maybe the UK FTA or if they are in talk with a few new clients, or uh, if you could highlight something on that front, if they are in talk with a few new clients, or 
uh, you know, what will basically lead us to move into the next territory? It's a good question, uh, Yes. So what will, I mean, you know, if you look at FY22, for example, we did about 3,200 crores, and we were at a run rate of about 800 crores a quarter. Um, we took a dip during uh, the last year, um, and now, uh, while revenues remain range-bound, the, the operating uh, margins and performance uh, are, you know, progressively coming back to normal. So the question about, you know, how do we get back to that run rate, that's really going to be driven by uh, enhanced utilization levels um, uh, at both at all our plants. And that's what we are focused on. I did mention some uh, to someone earlier during this call that we, you know, we have done away with some revenue streams, which won't, uh, which won't materially impact our operating performance, but will impact some of our, uh, will impact the revenue line a little bit. But you know, notwithstanding that, I think the run rate will come back. Uh, as we place higher capacities, um, driven by our focus on enhancing market presence across geographies, tapping into more channels, and um, you know, continuing to broaden our product portfolio. So these strategies, uh, which are currently playing out, uh, will aid us to get back into that revenue orbit. Right. And any new clients that we are uh, in talks with? In the near term, yeah, we we've added a substantial number of clients over the last uh, couple of years because we've had a new um, we have a new product portfolio to showcase, uh, namely our bath solutions vertical. So you know, on the back of that, we've added several new clients, um, and we continue to add new clients um, at a macro level. Um, you know, there is uh, there is a there is a angle of the China plus one that's playing out. Uh, it's obviously not limited to our sector, but vis-a-vis uh, -vis our sector, uh, there is this uh, angle um, right. which which is playing out. We are seeing interest in sourcing from uh, India, um, and we are seeing. Uh, potentially speaking, more shifts that can happen from places like China. We're also seeing the fact that Pakistan is going through um, a lot of social, uh, socio-political turbulence and economic turbulence, and that's also sort of paving the path for India to look as look a, a, a more attractive sourcing destination than uh, Pakistan. Uh, you know, I'm just highlighting some macro economic movements that could potentially impact our industry positively in this case. Right. Um, so, as far as FTAs are concerned, while there's no concrete news, um, you know, just as yet, but uh, as is available in public domain, uh, you know, it's in the works. And if it were to happen, then that would again give a fillip to India, uh, you know, as a more attractive sourcing destination for these kinds of products. Right, right, sir. Uh, and uh, thanks, thank you, that was helpful. On the second question, uh, so we said that we don't have a lot of principal payments in FI24, so maybe the interest cost will remain at a similar level to FI uh, to the previous year. Uh, but uh, for the next year, that is FI25, uh, what sort of a, a payment plan do we have? So I'm uh, trying to understand uh, maybe by the end of FI25, what will uh, be our net debt situation? Um, we can circle back here, Sean, specifics of FI, you know, of principal repayments and things like that. Um, but regardless of what our principal repayment outflow is, we'll continue to try to deleverage, um, you know, work on even uh, working capital cycles, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and so that's what we've been doing. Um, but uh, more specifically, if you need any data, we'll be happy to get in touch uh, or do get in touch and we'll take you through it. Sure.
And one la one last question, if I may. Uh, on the domestic front, uh, you mentioned that you'll be sharing a strategy shortly. Uh, my question was, uh, how significant uh, will this opportunity be for us in relation to our current business? Uh, and uh, if you could highlight uh, the market size or uh, uh, competitive landscape or something like that. Um, you will hear from us very shortly on this front. And um, so I wouldn't want to say much more on that at this, uh, on this call. But as I said, you will hear from us. But generally speaking, India is uh, a growing market, obviously. Um, it's a consolidating market in many ways. Um, it's evolving. It's, a, it's, it's very interesting for us. And uh, uh, and you know it's going to be substantial um, in the medium to long term as a as a consuming market. So in that backdrop, you'll be hearing from us shortly as to what we have in mind. Okay. Thank you, and uh, best of luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Thruvish from Premji Invest. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. So I have two questions. First is on the utilization. So when I look at the percentage increase in the utilization for the quarter, that's uh, quite high for bedsheet when we compare that to towel. So are you seeing some good traction in bedsheet versus towel? If you can maybe qualitatively comment. Uh, and sec yeah, so that's the first question. Yeah, so Dhruvish, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Q1, that's what we saw. So yes, sheeting saw better traction than Terry does. Uh, but, you know, it fluctuates between quarters. But for the first quarter, that was the story, right? Yeah, and do you think this trend uh, should continue for the rest of the year? Or, uh... I mean, we are seeing, we are seeing, uh, uh, we are seeing traction on both fronts. Uh, between quarters, one could do better than the other and, and vice versa. But, you know, I, I think uh, thematically, um, you know, we are seeing improved traction on both fronts. Uh, and that's how we think it should pan out for the rest of the year. Of course, there will be fluctuations uh, between quarters. Yeah, sure. And second is on the uh, model making capex, which you have delayed it. So, uh, had had it been done, how would it uh, impact our capacity, which is like 61 million for sheeting and 25,000 ton for towel? So if this was done, then how would this two number look like? Uh, and what would be the amount of capex that would need? Uh, uh, so because uh, a lot of our infrastructure and our major capex cycles over all our infrastructure is in place, so we were not looking at any big bang capex. Uh, uh, you know, to de bottleneck both these capacities, it would be within our annual uh, maintenance and organic capex uh, budgets. Um, and uh, we were looking to expand this to uh, 90 million meters and 40,000 tons per annum, respectively, but which we have put on hold. And we would have typically done that over, spread over two fiscals, you know, in to make sure that we stay within budgets and so on. But that's how it would have broadly looked. Um, again, as I was saying earlier, there are various product categories and adjacencies that we are in and so on. So that adds a layer of complexity in terms of deciphering what the capacity that we're talking about uh, means in various product categories. But broadly speaking, those were the numbers. Sure. So just to understand it better, so this 70 crore which you talked about uh, will uh, go to bottlenecking for this year, which will be considered as a maintenance, and the 9 million uh, and uh, uh, 40 million for towel, 40 million, sorry, 40 ton, for, uh, that will uh, be maybe done in 24 and 25, right? No. What I said was, your question was what would it have looked like, and I said, I was yeah. answering what it would have looked like had we gone ahead with it. Uh, right. But presently, we are on hold. Um, you know, we're just 
watching market conditions. As I said, we are focused on driving operating performance. Our priority is to deleverage and deliver this performance. And once we feel comfortable with our performance, then we will reinitiate these um, these um, capital expenditure programs. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rusme Koza from Nine Rays Equal Research. Please go ahead. Thanks for the follow-up, sir. Uh, sir, my observation, as you mentioned earlier, you know the difference between your console numbers for last year and this year, and the standalone, it's come down from 176 crore to 56 crore. So last year, non-standalone was almost 26 percent of your overall console revenue, which has come down to 8 percent. And you somewhere mentioned that you have shifts, uh, you have your coming off from the outsourcing to own manufacturing, it seems. So is, it, is this also contributed to the uh, improved margins? And if you can just share, you know, that uh, how much is outsourced uh, right now and how much it was last year? So uh, we are not coming out of outsourcing. Uh, we are reducing certain product categories that we outsourced earlier, um, you know, Point number one. Point number two, yes, um, you know, that's what has, you know, for the most part caused the delta between standalone and console to diminish. Point number three, mathematically speaking, that would have an impact on margins and to that extent uh, it, it has had uh, an impact on margins uh, in terms of a positive impact. And... Um, um, your fourth point on how much is outsourced and how much is not, uh, you know, I can't specifically comment on that, but it's a very small portion of what what the outsourcing is vis-a-vis -vis total revenue streams. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, related question, sir. Qualitatively, uh, the outsourcing was earlier more in the terry towels or the sheeting business, and uh, which has got reduced, if you can just share. Um, you know what I do, uh, Rusnik, is it's 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 in the home textile space, but it's not necessarily sheeting or terry. There are various other products that we operate in. But I'll be happy to sort of give you a clearer picture offline because it'll be difficult for me to explain, you know, over a call. Okay. Well, a small last question, so if you can just quantify how much. Uh, your EBITDA margins could have improved on account of the shift or reducing your outsourcing to uh, own manufacturing? Um, I'll have to work that out, but it, it wouldn't be very substantial. Um, I'll have to work that out and get back to you, which we'll be happy to do. Okay. But it can't be very substantial. Okay, okay, okay. Th thanks. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question. I would like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you all very much for taking uh, all this time and asking all the questions that you did. I do hope I've answered most of your questions. If, uh, if there's anything that you'd like to know more about uh, or be more clear about, do reach out to us and we'll be happy to take you through it. Thank you again. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Alara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.